It's a blessing to be here this morning. It's a pleasure to be among saints of God. Where I call you family, friends, moms, dads, aunties, uncles, daughters, sons, nieces, nephews. It's a pleasure to be with you. Because the God we serve is a Today I want to talk to you about tapping into multi-generational blessing and passing them on. Tapping into multi-generational blessing and passing them on. Can I get someone to read Genesis 22, 15 to 19 for me, please? And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, and said, Myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and have not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and the sun and the sun which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because thou hast obeyed my voice. Verse 19. So Abraham returned unto his young men and rose up and went together to Beersheba. And Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. Amen. 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 Saints, this is a story about the obedience of Abraham and how he was blessed. You see, when you obey God, God blesses you. When you disobey God, he might curse you. Last week, last week, last week, last week, we had um, a preaching about breaking generational curses. It was very powerful. Please, um, there's a YouTube video with the minister's channel, general channel online. If you go on YouTube and type in Christopher Dryden, there's a video there. Please watch it from last week. We gave a strategy of how we could break generational curses. Because, saints, whether we like it or not, somewhere down the line, through our bloodline, somebody may judge something somewhere, and it is locked. It is locked. It is a curse somewhere. We need to break that curse. So last week, we discovered that the only way to break that curse is what? Through the blood of Jesus. It is the only way to break that curse. Without the blood of Jesus, curses cannot be broken. Without the blood of Jesus, we will be stuck where we are for years. Without the blood of Jesus, you, your mindset can never be changed forever. Without the blood of Jesus, the things that you think will get you to heaven, it will never get you to heaven. You need the blood to plead on your behalf daily. And when you have curses in your life, it's, it's, like, it's like a sewer, it's like a, a, a tube. When water flows through the tube and there's a, 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 a stumbling block, it stops. Nothing goes through. These are some of the curses that we need to break them so that we will be free. So that the water, the blood of Jesus can run through. Amen. And prayer with the blood of Jesus adding a little bit of fasting to make it sweet for God. Amen. 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 That is your ingredient to break the generational curses. And today we are going to add the ice on the cake. Ice on top of the cake. Generational blessing. Amen. Amen. How are you going to move from curse to a bless? Generation. Say you are blessed. Say your tell your neighbor, my generation is going to be blessed. My generation is going to be blessed. From me to my generation, they are going to be blessed over and over. Amen. Because today, say we are here because we were blessed from the blessings of Abraham. Why? Because God told Abraham, take your only son. Isaac, and then I'll show you something. God didn't tell him what you were going to do. He said, take him, bound him. And then when you get that, tell him what to do. <laughs> Early in the morning, he went to his guys, two guys, took them, come on, take some wood, firewood. We are going to a three-day a, 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 a three journey. They asked, why are we going? He said, no, it's a secret. Even I do not know where I'm going. Followed them, took Isaac with him. Isaac and the two guys carried the wood into the wilderness, followed that Abraham. That the Abraham went to the wilderness, and then God said, Look, now make your altar. Put 
Isaac on the altar. Put firewood on the altar and put Isaac on the altar. And take the knife. So before they were going, Father Abraham told the boys, you stay here. Me and my son, we are going to the back of the uh, uh, mountain. Because Abraham didn't know what the boys said that he's going to give it to Isaac. <laughs> you have to do this in secret sometimes. So he went behind the mountain with Isaac. And Isaac, he was following dad. He said, Daddy, Daddy, I have this firewood on my head. But where is the sheep? Where is the goat that we are going to sacrifice? Isaac was thinking, this one is disturbing you. Am I? Am, am, am I? Because you have, you have to ask questions, isn't it? Somebody, somebody has promised you something and you do not ask questions. Isaac was asking, hmm, this one, dear. Hey, this one is dead, you. Where's the sheep daddy? So he asked Baba, uh, Daddy Abraham, he said, No, don't know what, just follow me. Have faith, come on, have faith. So Isaac miraculously followed his dad to the top of the altar. He said, Lay down the wood. Isaac was still thinking, hey, I've put the wood on the top of the altar. He looked left, he looked right. And then a bit of curry is on top. <laughs> we are ready to sacrifice Isaac. And the Spirit of God came and said, Abraham, said, Lord, the angel said, and said, stop. He was ready to what? Kill his only son. Evangelist, if I ask you, bring your son tomorrow. Let's <laughs> Which one? You tell me. The <laughs> one of God, I say, look, one of your daughters, please, just give me one. Eh? So, mommy, I say, look, one of your beautiful kids, bring one. And then tomorrow we'll see, we'll talk about it. I say, Junior, I said, bless, please give me Joseph, please. I didn't see you. I said, let me say, God forbid. <laughs> God forbid. Abraham didn't say, God forbid. The blessings of what? Obedience. That is the difference between Abraham and the blessings he got. That is, a, that, that, that is why you and I, we are also tapped into that blessing today. That we, we because of his obedience, now he says we are here today to worship with each one of us, to show the love of Christ. Amen. 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 We are blessed. So we hear a lot about breaking generational curses, but what about tapping to uh, personal gen gen generational blessings? So we have to understand that blessings are there to be tapped into. The blessings are there to be what tapped into. It's like you have you have a big screen television at home and you want to watch your favorite program. What do you do? You have to press channel 9 to bring the information on channel 9, isn't it? That is your blessing. So you have to tap into the blessings. Blessings are is what? All around us. But you have to know the frequency to tap into. It's as simple as that. You have to identify the frequency to get the blessing. It's like radio frequency. This mic is the frequency is with this speaker. So this speaker will never be able to connect to another this um, another um, this mic will never be able to connect to another mic. That's uh, the frequency. You have to tap into the, the frequency of what? The blessings of God. And there are so many blessings of God that He has given you and I. One of the blessings is what? You woke up this morning. You, you are not in the hospital. You open the free there's dinner in the in the, in the free. You 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 have, you have a bright mind. You have kids who are healthy. Exactly. You have you have a job to go to. You have an income coming in. You are not lacking. Education, you go, you pass your uh, exam, it becomes easy for you. Your friends are lagging behind, but you are moving forward. You are moving, they see you are moving forward. Progress is with you. That is a part of the blessing says. Yes. Hallelujah. So a blessing is a pronunciation which impacts ritual power, opening the way for you in your life. It gives you approval and confidence and the power for you to succeed. 
It is a grace to enable you to be, become what you are meant to become and achieve what you are meant to achieve. It is the grace of God that blesses us. It is not by what our might or our beauty. If 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 God God is looking through the the what do you call the Bible goes for beauty, I'll come number number ninety nine point nine 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 nine. <laughs> yes. Come number ninety nine point nine nine. It is not about our beauty, but it's what it's about the grace of God that opens the channel, that opens the window for you to be blessed. But the blessing, when God blesses you, you have to also share in the blessing. Give unto your next generation. Tap into it and give it to them so that when they also come, they can also what? Follow in your footsteps. I mean, there, there are so many families, when you look at their bloodline, there are so many, I mean, going on. And the kids that are born to the family, they will also, if there's not a, 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 a breakage, they will carry on. But when there's a blessing, the blessing what it passes on. Haven't you heard um, um, they they give a quote? They say, oh, because of this man or woman, because of their prayer life, because of the way they did. Now look at their family. Their family is very, very blessed, isn't it? It's what you and I we have to tap in. And it said it, it, it is evident here this morning. Because every face here, you are blessed. Believe me. You are blessed, but you have to make sure and understand that you are blessed. You are the only person who can minister to yourself. It is you who can pour blessings into your life. You see, I can say a lot of blessings onto my brother-in-law's life, but if he doesn't believe none of the blessings, it is never going to work. But if he believes himself and he wakes up every morning and says, Look, I am blessed based on the Bible, some Bible verses, blessings will find its way to him. It's as simple as that. It means that he has opened a channel for blessings to flow, flow through. And if he continues doing that, his generations, multi generations, are going to be blessed over and over and over and over. Saints, they will tap him. Most of you, most, 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 most of us, we are parents. We are parents. Our kids, our nephews, our nieces, we some of us, we are aunties, we are uncles, we are grandparents. We have to put the bowl of blessings. Save it for them. Amen. So how do you recognize multi-generational blessings? Our family is important to God. And it is clear that he does not think merely in terms of individuals, but in terms of what? Generations. God thinks in terms of generations. Chantel, God thinks in terms of gener your generations. Amen. Generations from now until a thousand years in your bloodline. So you see, whenever we are asking things for God to bless us, do not ask for God to bless you for the next one year or ten years. No. Generation now. Tell God, look, God bless me and bless my generation and bless my generation and bless my generation. So we are looking at 500 years to 1,000 years of your bloodline. Because you and I, we are sat here because a long time ago, millions of years ago, thousands of years ago, one of my ancestors, one of evangelists, one of your ancestors, the blood carried on. That's why you are here. So imagine a million years ago, a thousand years ago, they didn't make provision for you and I. You will not be sat here. It meant that somebody somewhere down your bloodline put some things in place for you to tap in the blessings. Amen. And last week we said that even if that blessing is, is cursed and is blocked, you have the blood of Christ to just dismantle it. And then carry on. The blessing, the blood blessing should start from you now. Forget about the past. Let the past go. Leave it. It's none of our business too. Yesterday is gone. <laughs> you see, they say today is a present. The present day is a present from our God. That's why we say present day. Tomorrow is the future. We do not know what tomorrow holds. But we know that God we serve today because He has given us a present to be happy about. Amen. So a blessing is a form of words, often spoken by someone or authority that impacts. Saints, if you are auntie, uncle, grandparents, I mean granddad, grandma, 
get your kids and it, it, the words you speak into their lives. It is key. You see, do not do it behind their scenes. Put them in front of you. Hold them if you want to hold them. Hold them and say you are blessed. Amen. You, <laughs> you have to be radical. Though. You want good things from God, you have to be radical for God. You see, the, 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 the days of being, of being sought for the kingdom of God is over. The days of, look, I am, I am just in my corner. I don't want to share Christ with people at work. It is over. You have to make noise in your workplace and they will say, ah, this one, we have to sack her because she preaches Christ so much. I guess when they sack you, Christ will put her into a different place. That is the God you and I would have to the days of being quiet for people to run over us is over. These are the days that we have to usher in. Because the God that you and I will serve is the only God. He's the Alpha and the Omega. There's no other God be, 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 be besides Him. And when God am I speaking about Jesus Christ, you see, there are so many gods. There are so many gods. These days I've decided not to ask people, do you believe in God? No. Because there are so many gods. Which God are I talking about? I have decided to ask someone, do you believe in Jesus? Yes, and then they will know exactly. Because when you say, do you believe in God, it's general. Yes. I mean, they have Muslim God, they have Hindu God, they have um, Ashanti God, um, <laughs> only, uh, only Nigeria God, only go, only God. Yes. 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 The God is Christ Jesus. Amen. That's the only God. Blow your trumpet and when they see you, they say, ah, this one, they are, cannot stand her because she preaches or he or she preaches Christ. That is what you and I we have to do to what? Move the nation of the United Kingdom and the rest of the world. Because the Bible says, wherever you find yourself, pray for that nation. Because when there's peace in that nation, also you have your peace. So whatever this nation is doing, what is none of our business, our business is to kneel down on our, on our two knees, pray to God. Now, God, we thank you that you have given us the peace to carry on our lives, to, to serve the God. Amen. So, we serve a good God. So, how can you pass on generational blessing? It is simple. Just show your children or any child you influence these two things. Number one, what it looks like to love the Lord with your heart, your soul, and your mind. And number two, what it looks like to love your neighbor as yourself. You see, the disciples asked Christ what um, a judge was trying to trick Jesus Christ, a lawyer. He said, what is the greatest commandment? And he thought that he was going to quote um, the law from Moses. All the uh, philosophical laws. But Christ said, no. There's only two laws. Love God with all your heart, your soul, and your body. And the second law is what is as great as the first law. Love your neighbor as yourself. That is all. See, that's how you pass on generational blessings. Because when you love somebody, you are not going to do something to hurt them for them to just say a curse word against your life. Okay? They will keep on blessing you. Keep on blessing you. You see, every time, you see, you have to, you have to do, do things in life for people to utter the words, God bless you. <laughs> do things to somebody for that person to say, God bless you. That is all you need. Because that blessing will come with what? Longer life. That blessing will come with a good job. That blessing will come with what? Good marriage, a good family, a good home, good children, good peace. Because it is all wrapped in one. It's unfortunate that we can we can we cannot unwrap it and then just say the blessing, blessing, but all blessings are wrapped in what? One. And it's key. Hallelujah. So when asked which is the greater commandment, Christ said, love your love God with all your hearts, your soul, and your body, and love your neighbor as yourself. And James tells us that pure religion and undefiled before God, the Father, is this. To visit the fatherless and widows in the affliction and to keep him unspotted, which is polluted from the world. 
So James, 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 James also said that the widows, widowers, child without parents, the fatherless, the motherless, these we have to also what? Love them. These ones are where God looks to bless us. Hallelujah. So God is a merciful God and it honors our efforts. And here are some ways you can put loving the Lord and your neighbor into practice. You see, it is one thing coming to church every Sunday and then hearing the word of God. And it's one thing going home and practicing. Maybe just one, one idea with your fellow brother or sister. Hallelujah. Because we have to share the gospel, isn't it? And it's not fair for us to consume without giving to somebody to also consume the gospel. So the first one is spend time with the Lord and let your children know what you do. So it is very important. Kids, kids, kids do not follow our words. They follow what we do. Enjoy, okay? Kids, they see what we do and then they emulate. They copy us. Yes, that is kids. So if your child sees that you read your Bible, ah, wow, what is this? They will start reading their Bible. If your child sees that you go on your knees and then you pray in situations that, I mean, the child knows that this family is going down, but you go on your knees and pray and things start changing. Say, oh, okay, so next time I'm going through challenges, I need to do that and pray to Christ, isn't it? If the child sees that every time before they go to school, say it is key. It is key. If you have kids here, before they go to school, hold your hands and pray <coughs> with them. Do not let, let them go out the door without holding their hands and praying with them. The enemies are set traps. We have to anoint them in the house before we let, we let them loose. It is key. They are our future. They are our multi-generational blessings. I mean, we are parents. Imagine parents when we go to a parents' evening sometimes and they call your kids to come and take certificates. We are shouting. We are happy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Imagine God says, "Well done." God is, God is. I mean, um, blessing your kid. How are you going to feel? How are you going to feel proud because you've done him what? Justice. You've done God proud. Hallelujah. Amen. So pray. Help them also pray. Help them learn the word of God. Because without the word of God, we have nothing. Without the word of God, we cannot conquer the enemy. The enemy works through spiritual realms. And the only realm we know that we can conquer is through the word of God. Adding prayer and adding fasting to it. We break him. We knock him out. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Number two. Spend time with your children. Make sure your influence is strongest in their lives. You see, parents, parents or aunties or uncles or grandparents, we have, we have, we have about eighty percent influence in, in in kids around us than anybody. Not even the school. They might go to school from nine to three, which is about six hours. But the influence you and I we have is, is a lot because the school. I mean, they move from class to class, isn't it? They are, they are, they are, they are. You see, they are not with the same teacher for six or eight hours. They are with different teachers. So when you, I mean, six teachers and you have six hours, it means that they spend one hour with each teacher. Mm -hmm. It is not nearly enough to get the influence that you and I we have in their lives. So we have to make that count. Spend a lot of time with them. More than they spend it outside. It is key. Because once you spend more time with them, you see, you see, we, you see when you make somebody happy, when you make somebody happy, now they start revealing things that is locked here. But if you are not closest to them, they will just take it somewhere. Get them close. You know this um, hen, hen when it's chicks and the eagle, eagle is I mean roaming about, coming to shoot them. What does the hen do? Protect with the with the with the with the feathers. With the feathers. So when the eagle is coming from swooping from the head, the hen is also ready. <laughs> Ready to what? Fight. That's what we have to do for kids. Because they are what our generations. Forget about you and I. It is not about you and I, it's about them. And 
Reach out to those who are hurting or in need and encourage your children to do the same. Take, children to, take your children to church. Worship only on openly and not just at church. Worship only and not just at church. Teach your children to pray. Let them see you pray and pray with them. Teach them to live by God's standards that are set forth in His Word. Help them memorize scripture. It is key. Because sometimes we find a situation where, I mean, you have to, words, words cannot come up. And the Spirit of God, when you have the scripture on your heart, you can start meditating. And then it releases you. It releases you. It releases you. When you are stressed, when you start memorizing scripture, it helps a lot. And model thankfulness and generosity. Be thankful, be grateful. Say thank you, Father. Everything thank you, Lord. Everything thank you, Lord. And be generous. Because what goes, God always replenishes. Do not worry about, oh, this, this, this one will go, it will not come again. No, it will surely find you. Because you have been a blessing to what? Your generations. Open the channels for God to, to also be a blessing to your generation. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Love and accept all people. Not just the ones who are like you. Grab hold of teachable moments and talk about it, uh, and talk about the Lord anytime there's an opportunity. Keep your priorities in line. Make sure that the time with your family and time with the Lord comes first. And do not allow anything to over, over, overcrowd your schedule. I mean, when, 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 when I was growing up, it was, it was um, business or career or work first. That, that was the, my other options when I was growing up. Business, career, and then family, and then God. Business, family, and God. That was my order of life. That was the way I lived. I used to live. But now, I said, no, 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 no. It's God first. And then family, and then career. If you have this in order, your life, your life will be set for life. Amen. Say, so that, that, that is the order. That is the order. Those things in order, and you, you see your life fly. There are going to be challenges, there are going to be stressful days, there are going to be times where you think enough is enough. But because you have put that things in order, because the foundation is strong, the wind will come, it will never blow you. Amen. Amen. You see, I mean, for the past two, three years, look at what was going on in the world. But you and I look with your beautiful faces sat here with your beautiful clothes, hey, nice perfumes. <laughs> hey, this is the God that you and I will serve. We serve a God that is so generous and so good that anything we ask, He gives this to us abundantly. Amen. 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 God wants to bless you, saints. That's why He gave His only begotten Son to be the greatest blessing of all. That is the greatest blessing of all. But you have to be able to receive what He offers. Sin in our life will block all blessings but wise choices has consequences but good choices will over to the lives of our children and their children and their children's children if you've been hurt by life and the cost of sin in your family just know that God loves you amen he wants to bless you in your family say to someone God loves me God loves me, God loves me. God loves me. none of us we are, we, are, we, are, we are far from perfect but when we want to please God and our church reflect that desire, He takes notice. So keep those generational blessings flowing or begin the cycle right now. In John 3 16, the Bible says, God so loved the world that He gave His word. Only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him will have what? Everlasting life. Therefore, once you accept Christ, the blessings that come from it through the faith that you show will automatically be evident in your life. As a believer, you have a different stream of generational blessings that you can connect with. Believing in God and knowing the way through Him, through Jesus, has His greatest blessing. The Bible says, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord your God shall call. Do not be the last link in the chain to break the generational blessing. Be the link that will be the extension 
of your family bloodline. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.